Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 9, special guest, Mr Paul Quinn. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr Andrew Exton. As part of our weekly Mac Connections podcast, we're interviewing teachers and students with respect to their experiences, I suppose, during this remote learning period. And today I'm speaking to Mr. Paul Quinn. Mr. Quinn, thanks for coming on board and, and being prepared to share your experiences. I first of all have been asking everyone, what have, they, what have their personal experiences been through this period of remote learning and maybe their observations with regards to the way that they're working with their students. What's it been like for you? Uh, things are fine. Um, I enjoy things that are new and increase my experience. Even things that can be a little bit off the script or negative. I've had more time to explore ICT, for example, and life's a much slower pace in one way. I'm not driving around in my car, I'm pretty much at home. In terms of students, um, I think students are better than I'm hearing in the media, social media, mainstream media, and also from some colleagues. I get the comment often that students are missing out. Um, I think what's more important to us is being allowed to surface. The things that matter to us are coming to the surface. Example of that is those who serve are more prominent and those who trade on celebrity or sport, for example, which are more like distractions to me, they are back in their box a bit. They're no longer the main game, no longer center of attention. Now, I think we've, had, we've obviously had more time and it's interesting. We celebrated MacKillop Day recently, virtually through that liturgy that you put together with students from the school. And I think it seems to me that often in times of disaster or in times of trouble or in times of chaos, we we maybe explore our faith a little bit more and we might look to people like St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop for a little bit of inspiration. Where, where does faith and, and maybe the words of Mary MacKillop fit during this period, particularly for us as a, as a Josephite school, sir, but more broadly? Yeah, that comes up often when there's a pandemic or there's a tsunami or economic crisis. If you look back through even modern history, people would say that um, faith becomes more present. I'd argue the other way around, um, not just to be difficult, but I think it's the way it is. I think faith is always present, but it's often obscured. Just take a, a normal person's life journey. For most of our life, we just live and things are great. Every now and then we lose a family member to illness. We suffer some kind of job loss or break a leg on a football field. Then it becomes more prominent. And that's the way I think it's meant to be. I don't think the big um, questions of life and, you know, reimagining our purpose, major, major tasks, I don't think they're a daily event. I'm not sure they're ever meant to be. So right now, I think faith is more prominent for many people because they're trying to make meaning of what appears to be a meaningless, random virus, of which we've got no idea. Now, getting on to Mary directly, she strikes me as a very pragmatic character and a very keen communicator for her time, letter writer. No emails for her, obviously, but she wrote letters all the time. I'd argue if she was physically present, she wouldn't miss this opportunity. Um, as she was spiritually present last Friday during our liturgy online, I argue she didn't miss her opportunity. Mr. Quinn, I think sometimes our students maybe struggle to find meaning in their faith and, and, and meaning in maybe the learnings and the teachings of somebody that lived hundreds of years ago. Are the words of Mary MacKillop 
more relevant now than what they might have been to students at the start of last year? And, and is there anything wrong with having a greater sense of meaning and purpose in faith in, in these sort of difficult times? See, um, I would argue that we have the same questions over and over again. They don't change. But what changes is the context in which you ask the question, meaning what is around you? What's happening? Where are you? So last year I was at MacKillop and things were very calm and settled. This year I'm at MacKillop and they're not that calm, not that settled, despite all the chit chat about be calm. I think the more you say it, the more you realize you have to say it because maybe it isn't. Both places were legitimate. Both were fine. The context is just different. So I think each generation, sometimes each year level, has to reinterpret what they've been hearing in the light of the circumstances they're in. So I would argue that Mary, who suffered a lot in her life, there's no doubt she suffered. I mean, look at the images where she sits in the um, wheelchair, had a stroke, overweight. She just looks like life really given her a hard time. Still, she was alive. She learned to write with the other hand. She kept up doing what she was doing. Um, so, okay, we're struggling at the moment. She would have known about that. We can share that sense of struggle. So, like I said earlier, faith is possibly obscured most of the time. It probably should be. Right now, no, it's prominent. It's prominent. And similar to what that sense of faith not being obvious and it's more prominent now, we've often talked through this period of all the things that we've lost and all the things that we can't do. From a personal point of view, is there one thing that you feel like you've gained either personally or professionally or from a faith perspective? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it sounds a bit perverse to say I'm enjoying myself when people are dying at terrible deaths in hospitals and in alleyways all over the world, but I am. Uh, more time to be alone and it gives me more time to just reflect on what I'm doing. You know, the life of a school, we're all in the school together usually. A hectic place, noise, movement, action. So I've had more time to be alone and it's been good. And is there anything that you've missed that is part of your normal routine that you wouldn't think of too much that you've been unable to do and that you found that you've missed during this period? Yeah, it's a very clear one for me. It's um, going to the pool and having a swim and going to the ocean and paddling on the sea. Um, both the same thing, all to do with water, but yes, that's the thing I miss right now. It's not happening. And finally, Mr. Quinn, and I think I'd, I hope that, we we are able to to offer a reflection or a piece of advice to our students that is applicable to them beyond the immediate circumstances of finishing year 12 or going back to do exams if there was a piece of advice that you'd give to students during this period and maybe beyond this period in terms of where they go and what they do what would that be yeah i've thought about this a lot even before i was asked to come on the podcast um basically flip the idea that this is a time where you're missing out. I'm almost uh, like a wild man when it comes to this comment. I find it really offensive and quite strange. I think it's a lot of older people perhaps who life might not have turned out as they wanted talking about younger people when perhaps they shouldn't. So my thought would be um, flip it. What do you mean you're missing out? I would say this is a time where you're able to peer into the heart of darkness. I actually wrote this down. I know it comes from Joseph Conrad. He wrote a book, but before he wrote the book and I was aware of him, I thought of these things. You're able to peer into the heart of darkness right now. Things are grim for many people, but I think if you look hard enough, all you can see is a flicker of light because light always shows up so much more when it's dark, obvious. And what is the light that you can see? Every day, every day since this show started uh, on the road, it's almost unfathomable, almost miss, you know, beyond our comprehension. We can't really get to the heart of it. Why are people of service paid so little, generally speaking, not really um, high on our list of priorities in our society, going to work at risk to themselves day after day after day? It's almost uh, inconceivable. So you are present in a society where this is happening on a grand scale all around you and globally. What an opportunity. Now, I know that sounds slightly perverse, but if you think about it, sit on it for a bit. You're exposed to something which is rare in this life. You've got this gift. Lucky you. Is it upsetting? For sure. 
confusing, no doubt, disturbing. I hope so, unless you've got some sort of issue. It's disturbing. I'd say, hang on to it. It'll be with you for the rest of your life and beyond. So with that, I do thank you for coming on, Mr. Quinn, and always offering a, a not a contrary point of view, but an individual perspective that is unique in many ways. And I do appreciate you doing that. And I hope that our students do afford themselves the opportunity to reflect and take time and to think of themselves, not just as individuals, but part of the grand scheme of life and existence on the planet. And I think maybe we don't do that in the busyness of our normal lives that we have the opportunity to do when we're not so busy. So I do appreciate your time. And I hope that, um, that our students and our community find your perspective really helpful during what is a very unique time in our lives. So thank you very much. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact the member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and take care.